morning, everybody. It is time for Chapter 31. Security guards swarmed through Bloomfield Science Museum. They formed a human bar barricade around Max, Annika, and Isabel. We're secure, shouted several men and women decked out in what looked like full riot gear. Helmets, body armor, serious weaponry. Why did you two wander off from the group like that? demanded Isabel. She sounded angry. We didn't wander off, said Max. Annika and I just wanted to skip lunch and visit the Einstein archives as soon as we could. Without your chaperone, said Isabel. Now she sounded exasperated. Why do you think we had a Shabak officer drive the minibus? The Shabak is the unseen shield here in Israel. Yahav is a highly skilled security officer. Yahav and the others were scheduled to join us at the archives, Annika said coolly. Her logical mind failed to fathom how she and Max could be at fault in this situation. Now why did it take them two hours to finish their lunch? Fa falafel is considered fast food in most cultures. The other kids voted to go to the bazaar, said Yahav, pushing his way through the fla Ooh, phalanx of armed security personnel. The seven other contestants were right behind him. Actually, said Keto, the American from Oakland, that was mostly your idea, dude. Hmm, because Tisa had her heart set on visiting the souk, Yahav explained, sounding very defensive, especially for a big, tough security guy. I would have been happy to go there after we toured the Einstein archives, said the girl from Kenya. It would have been too crowded, said Yahav. Too much traffic. Now he sounded even more defensive. This is exactly why we need autonomous automobiles controlled by robots, said Klaus. There would be no traffic jams with robots. Well, Klaus... Klaus... Klaus blathered on about the beauty of driverless vehicles. Max noticed Isabel subtly arching an eyebrow as she studied Yahov's face. Was she silently questioning her decision to entrust him with the safety of her nine CMM char CMI charges? She should be, because Max was sure. Natan, Rivka, Isabel called out to a man and woman on the security team. I want you two to drive the bus back to the Institute. Yahov? Yes, ma'am. You are relieved of your duties. Please report to your commanding officer. He will advise you of your new assignment. But it wasn't my fault, he insisted. The two girls wandered off. With your, per with your permission, said Annika. Max smiled. This was another good thing about having a friend, she realized. They could say the things she wished, wished she'd said. Isabel turned to Max. You're riding back with me. Yes, ma'am. The car ride back to CMI was tense. Not because Isabel drove like a mani maniac. In fact, she didn't. She drove very, very slowly. She also didn't say a word for five full minutes. Finally, she spoke. You scared us all. But we were fine, Max told her. The two men never really threatened us. Well, they did, sort of. But we ran away. Don't forget, I'm a city kid. I have street smarts. I know how to handle myself in tough situations. Oh, is that so? Annika and I are safe, right? Besides, we got to tour two amazing museums, the Einstein Archives and Bloomfield. The archives are so awesome. Since Annika's from Germany, she could read all of Einstein's letters and postcards, and she recognized, it, recognized some of the places in the photographs. Max babbled about her adventure in the wonderland of the Einstein, of Einstein Abelia, like memorabilia, for the whole ride. Isabel let her. By the time they reached the CMI building, they were both smiling and laughing. It had been a good day.
a little scary, but good. But that's what life's all about, taking risks, facing challenges. And if you did those things with someone, if you survived together, you became friends rather quickly, Max had discovered. You need to be more careful, Max, remarked Isabel. If you try to navigate the unknown waters, you run the risk of a shipwreck. True, said Max. A ship is always safe at the shore, but that's not what it's built for. Touche, said Isabel. You win. But remember, Max, not everybody is interested in changing the world in the same way we want to. Others would prefer to change it in a way that makes them wealthier. They parked in the garage underneath the CMI building and made their way to the elevator. You'll want to make it an early night tonight, Max, Isabel suggested. I'll come. In the light of today's incident, we are accelerating the schedule. For the contest, tomorrow morning you will be taking one more final exam. <sighs> Another test? Yes, <clears throat> and this one will take eight hours.